resilience. Something it can be taught. I think it is innate. The core of who we are as humans. Think of a baby, a premature baby, born at two pounds. What do we do? We take that baby, we place them in an incubator, and then we try to simulate an environment as close to the womb as we can get. Then we wait. We wait for their cells to form, we wait for their organs to develop. We don't teach that baby how to do that. We just wait. It's a natural process of development. It's nature. In this example, nature is cultivated by nurture. I believe for resilience to be maintained, or resilience as nature to be maintained, our nurturing environment is required to create an opportunity for healthy growth. Nurture. Nurture is cultural. It is the way in which we learn to respond to our environments based on our experiences with others. For some ethnic minority groups, nurture is made up of cultural values that have been deemed to be protective. For example, in African American culture, variables such as spirituality, kinship, ethnic identity, they've all been deemed to be protective in the face of adversity. So, this is a cell. A cell in which resilience lives in the nucleus, the core part of the cell. If we were to take those cultural factors and place them within the body of the cell, they would make up the cytoplasm, or the area, the fluid within the cell that protects the nucleus. However, if this cell were to live in an environment that did not share those same values, they would end up minimizing or maybe even devaluing the importance of these values. That process of minimization, it weakens the cell membrane and it makes us more susceptible to illness. So when kids, when they're exposed to germs such as microaggressions, you know, those tiny little statements that seem innocent, but they actually feel like cuts to the psyche of that person. Or worse, if they're exposed to viruses, such as implicit bias, where there's assumptions made about who they are and what they're capable of just based on the color of their skin. So if we have germs and viruses, they're chipping away at the cell membrane. The same way that that happens, the same thing happens with the psyche of a child when the small things such as microaggressions and the big things such as implicit bias are chipping away at their self-esteem. So when that chipping away process is happening and they're constantly being reminded that culture is irrelevant, we can't expect them to be resilient. You see, if this virus were to bind with this healthy cell, it would take over all elements of the cell down to absorbing the nucleus. That is the death of a cell. Figuratively, it's the death of the socio-emotional health of that particular child. So my work is to protect the nucleus. We do what we can to build antibodies, to bolster the cell membrane, and make that cell less susceptible to viruses such as institutional racism. We do what we can to remind our kids that culture matters and health and strength is connected to culture. For example, a project that I'm doing now, I'm working with African-American girls that are in middle school and happen to be in foster care. So they're in adverse circumstances, but we are telling them and reminding them that resilience is already there. And what we're doing is exposing them to a culture-centered curriculum called Sisters of Nia. And through that process, they're being reminded of the importance of who they are as people and building their ethnic identity while also working on mental health supports, such as mindfulness techniques. All of it's happening within a culture-centered context. So for my group, we believe that resilience is nature and nurture. We be believe that resilience is also cultural, but ultimately, we believe that culture is resilience, the biology of resilience.